Welcome to Worship with Trinity Lutheran Church for this Sunday, August 30th. Reminder to download the Trinity app. That's the easiest way to see all of our online content. Sign up for in-person activities like worship and youth group. Get information about upcoming events and contribute to Trinity. Information about how to download the app can be found later in this video. We continue to have neighborhood worship every weekend, as well as gathering and events for youth. Please see the app, the Facebook page, or the website for details and signups. And please remember that we are gathering at Chickie's Park for worship on Sunday, Sunday, September 13th at 9 a.m. We will celebrate the affirmation of baptism that day. Finally, I'd like to remind you to share the peace with us on Facebook today. We're doing the peace of the animals. Share a picture of a pet sharing the peace. You can include yourself in it if you want. You can find the peace post on our Facebook page. Share your pet peace picture in the comments. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
If we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. For the reign of God and for peace throughout the world, for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For your people here who have come to give you praise, for the strength to live your word, let us pray to the Lord. Have mercy, Christ, have mercy. Help, save, and defend us, O oh God. Amen. Let us pray. Renew our desire to do your will this day and every day, gracious God. Remind us again and again that today is a day that you have made and that your people are called to share your life and your love in every moment and at every opportunity. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
Amen. A reading from Ecclesiastes. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek, and a time to lose. A time to keep, and a time to throw away. A time to tear, and a time to sow. A time to keep silent, and a time to speak. A time to love, and a time to hate. A time for war, and a time for peace. The Word of the Lord. Hey there, JJ. How are you doing this morning? Oh, hey, Michelle. How are you? I'm doing really good. Thank you. So, so school has begun. Yes, it has, JJ. Yes, it has. And, and I got to tell you, it's been so good to be together, even though things are a little different, of course. But, like, for one thing, we can all recognize each other from just the eyes up. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I was curious if you'd be able to pick out your friends. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, you know, it's kind of good to be six feet apart because uh, nobody's grabbing the old tail, if you know what I mean, <laughs> which happens a lot in my school. Uh, <laughs> but I got to say, it's an awful lot of sitting down. Oh, yeah, school might be a lot of that this year. That sure is the opposite of summer, isn't it, JJ? Oh, yeah, it's the opposite of summer, for sure. <laughs> exactly. Hey, do you want to play an opposites game with me? Ooh, sure, 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 sure. Go ahead, okay. go ahead. All right, let me share my screen with you so you can see. And let me just get this started. All right. So what we have here, JJ, is what? What do you see? see a baby crying. <laughs> yes, they sometimes do that. So, JJ, what is the opposite of cry? Uh, laugh. <laughs> Very good. Okay, JJ, what is the opposite of so? Uh, rip up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I hope you don't do that. Uh, not too often. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right, JJ, what is the opposite of silent? Shh. <laughs> Speak. <laughs> Speak, right. You do a lot of speaking, JJ. You do. Yes, yes. yes. It's a habit. <laughs> <laughs> and JJ, what's the opposite of love? Oh, it's kind of sad. It's hate. Mm, yes, it is, JJ. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, those are the opposites I had for you today. Well, well I have some opposites. You want to play? Oh, yeah, JJ. I'm a little worried, but sure. Let's play your opposites. <laughs> Okay, what's the opposite of groomed? Ugh, messy. Uh, well, I was really thinking happy, but okay, okay, we can do we can do happy. That works too. Uh, what's the opposite of uh, stinky? Oh, the opposite of stinky, sweet smelling. Oh, I was thinking boring, but okay, okay, uh, you know. But but you got, you always smell good, and it's okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, let's see. Uh, how about the opposite of good? Oh, JJ, making bad choices. That's the opposite of good. Uh, yeah, that, that's really true. <laughs> I, I tend to do that occasionally. Uh, but, but Michelle, if God loves us, and I know God loves us, why, why isn't everything good all of the time? Oh, JJ, that's a great question. A lot of people are curious about that. But in the Bible, we have an answer. It's found in Ecclesiastes, and it says there is a time for every matter under heaven. Oh yeah. God doesn't want bad things to happen to us, JJ, but it's our free will that causes it. We have the ability to make our choices. And sometimes we make choices that result in bad things. Yeah, we sure do, but, but you know something? What? Well, a lot of times when I make a bad choice, and you know I do that a lot, uh, I learned something. Like the other day, I, I was going to take a bath and I turned on the hot water and I turned away to do something and I'm mussing around in the bathroom. And then I went and stuck my paw under the hot water and whoa, it really hurt. <laughs> and, and I remembered Pastor Mike saying, when you turn on the hot water, put your hand there so you know when it's really hot and you won't burn yourself. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's very good, JJ. Very good. We do learn from the bad choices we make. Yeah. But it's still, 
kind of hurts. So what do we do when, when, when bad things happen? Oh, that's a good question, JJ. When bad things happen, we can remember our opposites game. And we can remember that we will soon be feeling the opposite of the bad thing we're feeling now. It will pass. And you know what I do when that happens to me? What's that? Well, when I'm feeling sad or down or I made a bad choice or I'm hurting in some way, what I do is I picture Jesus right beside me holding my hand. Aww. And that way I know Jesus is always with me because JJ, Jesus is always with you. And Jesus cries when we cry and Jesus wants to hug us and love us and make us feel better. So I just picture Jesus holding my hand and it makes me feel better. And, and you know that with Jesus, it's going to get better. It does. Yes, it does. Soon you'll be feeling the opposite of the bad that you're feeling. That's so true, JJ. Can I ask a question? Sure. Well, instead of holding my paw, could I think of Jesus rubbing my ears? <laughs> yes. That's a beautiful thing. Yes, Jesus will be yes, rubbing your ears. Yes. <laughs> All right, JJ, thanks for visiting with me today. All right, Michelle, you have a great day, okay? All right, you too. We'll see you later. All right, see you, kids. Bye. Bye. The Holy Gospel for this day comes to us from Luke, the 24th chapter. Then Jesus said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. The Gospel of the Lord. She was waiting for the right time, and then she'd have her way. Then everything would work as one and bring a brand new day. He was waiting for the right time, when he would win the fight and take control of everything and do just as he liked. They were waiting for the right time, but the right time never came. Life just did what life will do and would not play their game. Those of us who are a little older hear the words of Ecclesiastes and here in our heads, a few more words attached to them. The words of a beautiful song. To everything. Turn, turn, turn. The song was written by Pete Seeger and made famous by the 60, 60s band The Birds, among others. And what it does is it takes ancient wisdom and basically slams it like a 10-pound rock into the crystalline notion that we, with all our size, even with all our technology, have any control at all in life. Life will do. What life will do, it will not play our game. I wrote this as we watched a Category 4, maybe 5, storm preparing to slam into the Gulf Coast, quite close to Houston, where Michelle Shirk and our kids and I worked so hard a few years ago to repair damage caused by Hurricane Hugo. I wrote as cries of injustice once again were ringing out cries for equity and an end to systemic racism. Cries echoed by players in the National Basketball Association, the WNBA, Major League Baseball, saying we're not going to play, we need to fix this. I wrote as I wore a mask in my own office as we wear masks to go to school, to grocery stores, to work, just to meet together. I wrote as fire continues to plague California. I wrote remembering I have not hugged anyone outside of my immediate family for months. I wrote feeling overwhelmed. Wondering if we could all take one more emergency, one more injustice, one more hardship, one more rotten thing. And as I wrote, that Pete Seeger song kept ringing in my ears. 
with its underlying message, you are not in charge. You are not. You are not. We are not. Life will do what life will do. I reconnected with a friend the other day, an old friend, a really old friend, so old that some of you listening weren't around when he and I were out there causing trouble. He'd actually found me online. I tried to find him about a decade ago. I guess he's better at hide and seek than I am. He wanted to talk to me about his synagogue. You see, we both minored in religious studies. And, of course, we got to talking. And he said, it's like we're living a scene out of Genesis. Exactly. And, you know, some of you have said to me over the years, looking at things that are happening, do you think God is trying to get our attention? And, yeah. I think God's trying to get our attention all the time. But honestly, I don't think God made COVID-19. At least not directly. I don't think God created Hurricane Laura or Hugo. At least not directly. I don't think God works like that. Even though some of the Bible seems to think God does. If you go through especially the Old Testament, you'll see lots and lots of laws that point to this idea that if God's not pleased with the little things, you're going to pay big time. Don't sacrifice a lamb with a blemish to God. God's going to be unhappy. Don't let a fellow who's got one leg shorter than the other serve as a priest. God's going to be unhappy. Don't, be, don't let a eunuch be a priest. Oh, for heaven's sakes, no. Even if that person was made a eunuch in an act of terrorism because God's going to be unhappy. Don't eat the wrong thing. <laughs> don't forget the Sabbath. Don't, don't, don't. The people who wrote these words, they believed in what we call causation. Act this way and God will act that way. Act the wrong way and the result will be really bad. There's actually another word for this, superstition. The idea that if we act in a certain way, God and life will be under our control. In the midst of the Old Testament, where a lot of these ideas exist, there's the book of Job, which says right out loud, wait a second, this guy was wonderfully good, and yet all the bad stuff still happened. And yeah, later on, this guy named Jesus shows up and he says, hey, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. But this idea that if somehow we act the right way, life will only be good, it persists in scripture and in life. I do think God is pulling at our hearts all of the time telling us the right thing to do. But not with hurricanes. Not with fires. Not with viruses. Those things just happen. And yeah, some argue that our own actions as humanity have helped those things along. And that's something we need to struggle with individually. And when it comes to the issues facing our society, we need to struggle with those and realize that we're all contributors. And we all need to be part of a godly solution. But the point is, the words of Ecclesiastes are going to come true in every life. Good times and bad times. Times to be people of action, Times to hang our heads in silence. Times to show joy. Times to show remorse. Times to work for real change. And yeah, a time to be born and a time to die. This is a picture 
of the seasons of life. And those who would say that a perfectly lived life of faith can somehow escape them, they're full of nonsense. And you know me. I don't mean nonsense. The author of Ecclesiastes actually has another word for it. Vanity. He says folks are full of vanity. And he calls the idea that we can gain any control in life chasing the wind. So what do we do? We embrace the moment right before us. The right now moment. Realizing that this is a gift God has given us. And we realize that life will give all of us the good and the bad, even when we, be, we have been very, very good, and even when we have been very bad. We seek in that moment to be Christ for the brothers and sisters in front of us, to be Christ, to manifest Jesus for them by living out his teachings. And we need to stop worrying about trying to control things. Jesus tells us we can't control them, and Jesus says we have to stop worrying about it. Jesus trumps all those who would say otherwise. Look for the best way to live out the love of God in the here and now. I believe that is the path to joy. There is, if you can accept it, a great comfort in realizing that life will do what life will do. Suddenly, it's not your responsibility anymore. Suddenly, we release the crazy idea that somehow we had any control. Suddenly, we're left with just one responsibility, to follow Jesus and to act for Jesus and to act for the others who come our way. Follow Jesus. Let the world turn. And you usually, if not always, will know exactly what to do. I danced in the morning when the world was begun I danced in the moon and stars and the sun I proclaimed a kingdom for each child of earth And Bethlehem was that kingdom's birth I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee But they would not dance and they would not follow me I danced for the fishermen for James and John they came with me and the dance went on I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame the holy people put my work to shame they whipped and they stripped and they hung me high and left me there on a cross to die I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black it's hard to dance with the world upon your back they hid my body and they thought I'd gone but I am the dance and the dance goes on oh dance and wherever you I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. On Sunday in a garden, Mary knelt in tears, an angel said, the teacher isn't here. And then a voice said, Mary, do not weep. 
is a promise our God will keep. In times of tears when your heart is blue, in times of tears I am still here with you. The day is coming and it's coming fast. That day will come and yes we all will dance or oh, dance and wherever you I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Oh, dance, and wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance People of God, what does the Lord ask of us but to do justice and to love mercy and to walk humbly with our God? Living together in hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people everywhere. Grant us time to listen, gracious God. Bring peace to nations, communities, people, and hearts. Grant justice to those who cry out. Grant mercy to those who are suffering. Grant wisdom to those who are making decisions. Bless your church everywhere to continue to endure through difficult times and to continue to witness to your coming kingdom, breaking into our world right now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us time to serve, gracious God. Be with all those who are working on the front lines, the front lines of pandemic response, the front lines of containing the wildfires in California, the front lines of disaster response in the aftermath of the hurricane on the Gulf Coast. Bless the work of all relief agencies and church organizations, especially Lutheran disaster response and the Texas-Louisiana Gulf Coast Synod. Be with all first responders and emergency workers and medical personnel who are putting themselves in harm's way for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant us time to be together, gracious God. Be with all those who are separated and all those who are far from home. Bring healing into hearts and minds that are troubled and torn. Be present with blessings for all who are facing life transitions right now, whether joyous or difficult or devastating. Help us to feel your connective spirit in our hearts and lives, even when we are apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you have called us to hold in prayer all those who are in need of help and healing. Be present with all who are discouraged, all who are lost, all who are grieving, all who are waiting for the world to change. Bring peace and healing into all the world, and use us more and more as agents of peace and workers of healing between people. We especially pray for healing for Kate Tome, Linda Lumby, Garvin Kissinger, Ken Hewn, Tammy Jacobs, the family and friends of Nick DeTore and the family and friends of George Stadler, and all those we name before you now. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you have called us to witness to your presence in the world. No matter where or when or how we gather, you have promised to be with us. Strengthen your people to show forth your presence in the world that all might know your grace and be encouraged by your hope. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another. The Trinity app makes it easy to watch videos like this one, view and sign up for our events, and to support Trinity financially, all from your phone. Plus, it looks really cool. Check out this purple cross for your home screen. Download the Trinity app today and get connected in a new, fun, and simple way.
Let us pray. God of all creation, all you have made is good, and your love endures forever. You bring forth bread from the earth and fruit from the vine. Nourish us with these gifts that we might be for the world signs of your gracious presence in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you refresh us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.